Thank you, Brian and Jeff. Congratulations to you both on your most recent successes in the market. Uh, both of you with LegalZoom's IPO in June and Brian on your recent IPO with Honest Company. Great wins for LA and just fantastic wins for you both. I think most people here today know about your backgrounds and it's safe to say that you both have contributed to building some of today's most iconic brands as founders, operators, investors, authors. And I know that much of your success has come from being really at the forefront and innovative with your marketing strategies and practices. And I'd like to unleash your wisdom on our audience around what you've learned about building iconic brands through influencers and influencer marketing. Uh, so with that, Jeff, unleash your wisdom on us. What's your philosophy and approach to successfully and authentically leveraging influencers uh, to help founders build brands and connect with customers? Well, crap, Lizzie, you, you sort of overbuilt it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll try to do it a little bit of justice, but I mean, interestingly, my, if, if you want to call it wisdom, um, with, with all things related to marketing um, and influence uh, is anything, anything but wise. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just natural intentions. Uh, for, for me, it's all about trying to create an organic experience. So knowing and understanding your customers, knowing what they want um, and what they need, trying to fit the product to that um, and, you know, and then match your messaging uh, in a very organic and authentic way, um, which sometimes involves influencers because you know, psychologically they can be very powerful uh, if authentic, um, it, it, sometimes not. So for, you know, for me, um, and you know, I, I do not use influencers very often. Um, so it, it's sparing uh, both in, you know, in the businesses that I have run, uh, but also with uh, businesses that we invest in. When, when we do, it, it's because there's a certain amount of authenticity. Uh, their, you know, their effort, their time, their experience carries the day. Um, and the fact that they're you know, influential is coincidental. Yeah, Brian, and um, that's really um, thoughtful. I appreciate it. Brian, do you have a similar approach? Do you think um, that we sh that founders should be judicious in how they leverage influencers? And to Jeff's point, um, how important is authenticity in this uh, journey for them? Um, thanks for having me. Can you hear me? Because I'm in the I'm in can. basement right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at my, my, my son's Boy Scout camp, and I, I found a basement to do this call. So, Brian, it sounds like you went up on the shuttle with, uh, with Richard Branson, and, and he <laughs> left you there. <laughs> it actually looks like it from the background. Uh, like, no. I appreciate you always, Jeff. Um, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn up the heat on my intentions. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's a word of Alex um, so, so I totally agree with Jeff. Uh, it really is about authenticity, building that that natural relationship with the consumer. And it really, when, when we were talking about partnering with uh, a celebrity or influencer, um, it really has to relate, right, to the end consumer. And you can't make the end consumer think twice about it. If the end consumer has to make an, an additional step or an additional connection to connect that influencer to whatever service or product that they're representing, then you've already lost, right? It has to be almost instant where you say, okay, I get it, right? And so one example of that, I mean, oh, there's so many examples in it, but you know, like, take any of the big influencers today, the JoJo Siwas or the, uh, the Char Charlie D'Amelio's or, or the uh, you know, James, uh, uh, God, whatever, the James, the guy who does all the stuff. <laughs> uh, James Charles, I'm sorry, um, and Mr. Beast. I mean, they all have very, very natural connections to whatever products are, right? And and it doesn't take a like anyone who knows them. They already know. Okay, I understand why Mr. Beast is selling burgers. I understand why James Charles is selling the makeup packages that he sells, right? And, and so forth. So even if you don't have that connection immediately, you've got to. Um, build that to the point where it becomes natural. An example of that is The Honest Company. When we started The Honest Company, when I started with Jessica Alba, at the time we started, most of her followers were not young moms. They were a different audience. And so we had to really build that following with her, 
uh, to attract more and more of that modern model, right? And we did that in, by, by reaching out to bloggers, having a lot of influence or um, events and so forth. And so when we launched into the marketplace, we had a tremendous followers of moms who, who understood her story and it resonated with them quite naturally. Yeah, I love what you're saying, because really at the heart of what both of you are talking about is storytelling and connection, right? And finding someone who um, so authentically connects with the brand that the consumer feels that it's totally seamless. Brian, I, I read a great interview with you where you talked about how you feel like a lot of your investing and your career has actually followed your life. And so it's felt very authentic to you in, in your own life journey. I think for a lot of our founders, they're just starting. It's for many of them, their very first journey. Um, and I wanted to know, as you, now on the other side of the table, for you and Jeff, um, if they come to you, how important are these partnerships or influencer um, integration into their brands, either at an early stage or later stage? What's the advice that you would give them as an investor? And do you actually feel like it's table stakes in today's world for a brand to have um, someone who authentically represents the brand and can tell that story out in the wild? No, I, I, I don't think so, Lizzie. Because um, at the end of the day, the most important thing of any business is the actual product, is the actual service, right? And, and the delivery of the promise of the brand to the consumer, right? And, and so long as you, you have a great product or a service and, and you're consistently delivering happiness or a great product or whatever it is to that end consumer, you have a, have a very strong fighting chance to, serve, to, to succeed. Now, in terms of working with an influencer or a celebrity partner and so forth, I wouldn't even call that table stakes. It, it, it's, it could be there. It doesn't have to be there, quite honestly. Sometimes I, I meet entrepreneurs who have a product and they're like, I need a celebrity partner or an influencer partner. And sometimes I'll, I'll tell them, you don't really need it. I, I can't even think of an influencer or celebrity that naturally fits with this product or brand. Right, and and so in, in those cases, you, you don't always need to do that. But I mean, you should be well versed in terms of marketing, of course, right? And and even if it's reaching out to some influencers to help market it and so forth, and, and, and market on Instagram or TikTok and understanding the influencer space, absolutely, that is taking steps. But partnering with that one or small group of influencers or celebrity, I don't, I don't think that's necessary per se, depending on the product or service. Yeah, and and, and look, I would argue that every Every startup has a prepackaged influencer attached to it day one. Uh, that's the entrepreneur. Um, and you know you shouldn't it, it, you have failed if you think you need to find another influencer. You know, as the entrepreneur, you should be the best person to convince your your customers, your employees, your investors uh, that they want and need uh, and you know and have to have whatever it is you're you're selling. If, if you can't do that and you need to rely on an influencer early on, um, you, you, should, you should go back to working at Starbucks. You, you'll, you'll be better off selling coffee um, in, unless your startup is selling coffee and then you've got a problem. Um, but, uh, but look, the, the, the reality is if, if you feel like you need an influencer, there's nothing authentic about that. If, if you see a fit with someone who happens to be influential, uh, then you, sh you should go after that, you know, individual as a partner. Um, otherwise, be your own influencer. The best way to learn about your market, learn about your customers, learn why people want or don't want your product. Uh, and, you know, and do that before you bring an influencer in. I mean, I I'd actually argue the opposite. It, table stakes is not having an influencer. Uh, because if you have to constantly question early on whether you're selling something because a influencer is hawking it or because it actually provides a real service and real value to someone, uh, you're, you know, you're, you're ultimately going to do your business a disservice. Um, Brian, as a recovered lawyer, I think you'll appreciate this. Uh, my mother was a partner in a law firm and I asked her once, what's the sort of number one skill you need as a lawyer? And she said, sales. <laughs> you got to go out there and drum up business. And what you're both saying really resonates with me, which is it starts with the founder uh, being comfortable in telling that story, particularly as it evolves over time. Um, and so Jeff, what you're saying really resonates around um, that beginning of the founder journey, often when, when maybe the story does start with coffee and then ends up being a car, right? And so it evolves over time, but at the core of it is something really true. 
as you all have looked at your careers and with the brands that you've worked with, who's done this really well? Or is there anyone out there in the marketplace where you feel like, wow, the founder really was such a great influencer or brand builder for the brand. And then they did a really beautiful job integrating others' voices into it, right? So it felt, to your point, like a totally authentic relationship that had been built naturally. If you guys have any examples, we'd love for you to share it with our founders so they can really understand and hear about that. I, I mean, I'm going to defer to Brian because if, if someone's asking me when Brian isn't on a call or, uh, you know, or, or on screen, I usually say Brian Lee. Uh, <laughs> he's done this over and over again, incredibly successfully, um, very organically, uh, and, you know, and continues to evolve and adapt the model so that when, you know, when it grows stale, because everyone's copying Brian, um, he's, he's already on to the, you know, to the next idea and, you know, in, in concept. So, uh, th yeah, that was a softball no to Brian. Brian. It was just like a softball to Brian, right? Here we go. Brian, yeah. dabble well, up. It is, but it's genuine. <laughs> you're, 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 you're embarrassing me, Jeff. Um, but in terms of who I think is doing it well, there's so many that are doing it well, quite honestly. It's like, um, the one that really sticks out to me, truthfully, is you. And I know a lot of people have heard of you. I'm not going to create some new company that no one's heard of, but, um, but in you, what point of culture has done there is, is honestly quite amazing. It's amazing that, that she has built her, you know, preferences, her, what, what she loves and likes into this company that exists not just for her own brands, but for all the other brands that she's attaching to it in a, in a very, very organic way. And I think Luke is here to stay. I think it's um, just just an amazing job that I see an influencer um, having built. Um, I think a lot of the you know the TikTok influencers are, are, are really the future, as we all know. And, and and what they're building in their own life for their own brands and their own business. Um, I mentioned someone before, but I went to a to Salt Bay's pop up restaurant in. Um, in Beverly Hills, I'm not sure if the name of is, but it's Missor at M-U-S-R-E-T, and I think they can pop up restaurants from there, but this is a, he's a, he's a steak chef, basically, he makes these steaks, and he pours a salt with his elbow, like, you know, that, the whole thing, and just based on that influence and, and the viralness of those videos, he has built an empire of steakhouses around the world. And I guess you may quite like it. And this is all within a matter of two or three years. And it, it, it's pretty incredible that you can take that type of influence and parlay that into, again, an authentic learning experience and start dominating globally. Like, um, it, it's not just sometimes you, you meet these uh, entrepreneurs, and they do a lot of, a lot of the provincial thinking that you know, the US is their only market. When in actuality, the world is larger, it's getting smaller and smaller through the you know, social media and, 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 and so forth. So, I, I, I think a lot of I, this might sound like a cop out, but so many of them are doing it right today. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just impressed every day. I think, um, yeah, anyway, I think Artist Sport's doing it great. I'll, I'll just plug in Artist Sport there <laughs> for both of us. <laughs> yes, well done. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much. I think what I hear you saying is um, listen to your intuition and wield influence as an effective tool because to your point, it, there can be this tipping point moment for you where that really is what clicks with the consumer and um, double down on it when it happens because it can provide some tremendous insights and brand building. Um, Jeff Steibel, Brian Lee, LA Legends. If you don't follow them online, please do because they are both marvelous to listen to. Thank you so much for your time and your insights today. Adam, certainly, we really appreciate you. Thank you.